Greetings everyone. Something a little bit different for you today. Um, we're taking a look at my soft modded Xbox. So um, this is running XBMC and for those with good memories it's a skin which is modelled pretty heavily on the old blade system that the Xbox 360 used to have. Um, as you can see it's got the media system, it's got uh, the games and uh, it's also got XBMC Live. Now this I haven't really calibrated or done anything with yet um, but there's a number of things that you can do with it. I'm going to take you a, a quick guided tour of what's available and then we're going to have a look at some of the fun gaming stuff you can do with this. So uh, first thing um, you've got a little live marketplace or whatever um, but I don't think you have to pay anything which is great. Um, you can watch YouTube, you can get different themes, you can even update the software, uh, although I've never had a problem with this piece of software which is uh, quite something when you consider uh, the way that many products ship these days. Anyway, so that's XBMC Live. I'm not going to go into too uh, too deep into what you can do with this. Um, there, there may be newer versions of this on the, on the market. This is basically what mine came with. Uh, this isn't a tutorial about how to install it, this is merely a guided tour and um, I bought this on eBay so um, anybody interested in getting a soft modded Xbox there are plenty of them on e eBay if you just put Xbox XBMC or Xbox Retro Console or something like that I'm sure you'll find one. Um, one of my main reasons for getting this was that actually um, the UK versions of the original Xbox didn't um, output into uh, 480p. They uh, never received the update from Microsoft. Maybe they thought we weren't ready for it. And so uh, I believe that's the same for all power regions. And I wanted to use a component cable, which is what this is running through. And I wanted to experience the games the best possible way on my, on my HDTV. So we'll just take a quick look at the system. As you can see, you've got the memory, you can manage your hard drive, your game saves and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this has got a 150 gigabyte hard drive on here. Not massive, but you can get still get plenty on it. You can change the appearance, the, the GUI, the skin, what kind of screen save you want. It even gives you uh, general information on the system with, with, in terms of shutting it down, um, your network, <laughs> even weather. Um, it can even give you the temperature of your CPU, it, go, it goes quite in depth actually, as you can see this is at 720p resolution. Um, the Xbox is capable of even running games at that resolution. Certain games do go up to what would have been considered as standard on um, on the Xbox 360. Um, but anyway, uh, I digress. Let's have a quick look at some of the cool stuff that's on here. Well, another cool thing you can do is you can install games directly to your hard drive. Um, we'll go into my game section and here you go. Um, you can sort this in a number of different ways. Um, you can have large icons, small icons, wide icons. Um, it doesn't matter, it's whatever, you, whatever your preference is. And as you can see, I've got quite a number of these on here. Um, not a massive library, no. Um, I, I pretty much install from my discs, it, you know, when I need, where, when I'm thinking of playing them or going to be doing a play session on them. And I have to confess, since getting this original Xbox, I've been playing a lot of sixth generation titles. I adore the sixth generation. Um, not, not much in the way of DLC rubbish or anything like that. So that, that's all pretty good. And um, you, you, you're getting the complete game every time. It runs pretty well straight off the disc. And um, there were some bloody classics. And at the end of the video, I'll be showing um, some footage running through the component cables just to give you a flavour of how good these things can look. But um, another cool thing uh, that, that you have which is obviously and uh, that's the program you use to uh, to get them onto your, to your Xbox. It's a very simple process. Again, this isn't a tutorial so I'm not going to show you anything like that. But if we go to emulators, I have this wonderful thing called CoinOps. Now for somebody of my generation, this is pretty bloody sweet because I can now play any game from any console right up to the N64 and PlayStation 1. Um, the PlayStation 1 um, emulation isn't too hot at times and the N64 one can have problems sometimes. But you've got to remember 
this is the Xbox, the original Xbox, emulating the generation before it. So uh, there's a good old Soul Calibur. Um, <laughs> uh, it's got a number of different uh, ways you can sort of split the, the menu. You can change all the background settings and stuff. Um, if I bring up the thing here, you've got different themes. You've got your settings here. You can choose whether or not you want to view it as a cabinet or a or full screen, um, whether or not you want the videos playing in the background. You can even um, correct the aspect ratio so that it stays at the original aspect ratio. You can smooth off all the settings and things like that. Um, nice picture of Chun Li there. Um, and it goes deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole. Um, again, I don't, I don't tend to mess with the settings because they were pretty much great when I got the console. Um, so we're just going to uh, come out of that and I'm going to show you some of the emulation that this thing can do. Now, um, I've set it up so it's kind of done by arcade in terms of manufacturer. Um, but if I go to, these are just my favourite ones, if I go to my non-favourite uh, ones, which if I can remember which menu I use to do that, uh, here we go, there are 4,052 games on here as you as you imagine, that's a fair amount. So, I mean, if you're the type of person who prefers Mortal Kombat 3 Ultimate as opposed to Mortal Kombat 3, well, whack that into your favourites and you're ready to go. Um, uh, just so we're not going to be here for pro possibly the next 20 years, I'm just going to stick to the favourites I have on here at the moment. And there is a wide variety of stuff on here. Even original Xbox titles can be loaded into this GUI and just easily accessed off of the... Uh, of the hard drive so let's have a quick let's have a quick look and see what we've got here so we've got super nintendo i'm going to show you some super super nintendo uh uh footage uh let's go to oh let me scroll quicker with that um one of possibly one of my favorite games growing up um i used to play it around my best friend's house um an awful lot and that's teenage mutant Ninja Turtles 2. The great thing about Coin Ops is, it, is that once you're done with the game, you can pretty much um, come out of it and go straight back into Coin Ops. There's no, there's no real mucking around, um, which is really, really cool. Um, so let's ha let's have a look. And there we go. So this scales it to your TV and everything like that, which is wonderful, um, which is what you want. Uh, I'm all the way back to the late 80s. God, I used to love this program. Okay. Now you can choose to sharpen up the image if you want, but I, I kind of like it like this. Again, it's all down to personal preference, and that's one of the best things about um, one of the best things about this software. Baxter Stoltman. He used to give me the creeps as a kid. Now, of course, buttons are all configurable. I'm using the D-pad because the D-pad on the original Xbox controller, or at least the Xbox controller S, I believe it is, not the Duke. <laughs> uh, my hands aren't that big. Uh, you can, it's pretty good. It's pretty good for retro games anyway. I'm trying to remember how to do things here. Yeah. Of course, it's a lot more fun with more people, and you can obviously put in more controllers, should you so wish to do that. Ah, brilliant. Come on, you get. Oh, pizza. I was amazed when I first played this how c close to the 
arcade machine it was. Back when Konami used to give a shit. Um, shame they don't now. <laughs> Imagine that, a licensed game actually being good. Anyway, let's show you some more. So, I just press uh, forward and back on the Xbox controller and I go straight back into Coin Ops. Which is wonderful stuff. It means I'm not pissing about. So, so let's look at something else. I'm feeling in a masochistic mood. Um, so let's let's have a quick look at Super Empire Strikes Back. Now I had a friend. Um, he actually completed this game. No cheats. I I couldn't. I I, I honest to God. I remember. I, I went back and played this recently, and I'm absolutely terrible at it. Absolutely terrible. It's weird. I don't remember the games ever being this hard, but maybe I had a better concentration or reflexes or whatever. Oh yeah, the Imperial March. I think we'll skip the intro. Everybody's seen the Star Wars intro by now. The emulation is pretty faithful, right down to the lovely muffled nature of the uh, SNES music chip. Great thing about this one is I, I remember just wanting the lightsaber when, when I played Super Star Wars. And getting it straight away was bloody brilliant. See, pe people talk about Dark Souls as if it's one of the most difficult games in the world. No, no, take it any of the fucking Super Star Wars games and, see, and it is just... If you're atrocious at it like me as well, that doesn't help. But these games are utterly brutal. Oh, Tom Tom. He looks like he's perving, doesn't he? We're watching somebody undress. God, you've got to love all that scaling and mode 7 this thing used to do. It's about one of the things it really had over the Mega Drive. That and the uh, wonderful extended colour palette. I mean, that really did, the Mega Drive really didn't show its age until a lot later on. Um, but it, it, when it did, it did. And it was mainly arcade ports that laid it down. Just the muted colour palette, like things like Street Fighter, Super Street Fighter. I probably didn't want to lose him. Oh, Health Sword. Anyway, I think you get the gist. Let's go and have a look at some Mega Drive games whilst we've been on the topic of those. Um, some people li like or loathe the sound chip on the Mega Drive. I personally love it. When it's used well, oh, anybody who wants to watch a decent retro show, for God's sake, if you're not watching it already, watch Game Sack. Those guys are utterly brilliant. Um, anyway, let's get out of the Super Nintendo section. Oh, we're in Nintendo. There's the original Nintendo. Mega Drive 32X. Now, it's not something I ever, um, I ever was able to uh, get my hands on back in the day. Uh, so it's quite nice to be able to play some of these. And God, some of them are terrible. But what are you going to do? Um, right, let's, uh, let's have a look at something on the Mega Drive. This is one thing you will find out when, when you when you get this. You'll be just going through it, and you'll be just like, go. God, there's so much to play here. It's ridiculous, and you will, <laughs> you you will be a bit lost at first. Um, uh, let's have a look. Oh, Adventures of Batman and Robin. Again, I feel like being a bit of a sadist. Now this game is brutal, uh, utterly brutal, um, but it's got some of the best sound coming out of the Mega Drive. It's amazing. 
and I believe I actually did some sort of jiggery pokery to make this sound so fucking cool. And I believe the guy responsible for this is none other than Jesper Kidd, the uh, composer who's become more famous recently for the tracks he, various tracks he's done on the Assassin's Creed series. I mean, this looks great. Sounds good too. So let's jump into the game. Batman, I'm going to have to be Batman, aren't I? Of course, the Mega Drive, I believe, had a slightly faster CPU. I could be wrong. Or at least it was the way it was used. Utilize so it could be a bit speedy. I, I believe they called it blast processing back in the day, but it's uh, it's definitely an advantage it had for certain games. I mean, there's no mode seven or anything like that. It, this game you will get completely piled upon, and the levels go on forever. But if you're up for a serious challenge, you want to see some really good Mega Drive graphics and some, here's some great utilization of that sound chip. This is definitely one for you. Oh. Christ on. There we go. Of course you got um, you can save the game. I believe this has got uh, save states so on it. I'm not I don't think I've used them as of yet. Bit of a purist that way. Hope there are no epileptics out there. And with me dying, I think we'll come out of that one. Okay, what's next? Um, let's have a quick look at another Mega Drive one, just in the interest of balance. Um, you also got Mega CD, which is great. Um, so I, I think I might show one of those. Uh, it'd be infamous Snatcher there. Um, we haven't got all day, so I won't show any of that. Uh, let's look. Sonic CD, why not? Why not? And you even get that wonderful menu. I remember when we first saw this because we didn't get the, tur uh, the turbo graphics or, the, or whatever it was called in the States, PC Engine over in the UK. You could import them in, but they, they were very costly. And so this was really the first CD based system we ever saw. And it was pricey when it came out. I remember getting an actual promotional video of this game and, uh, and, and a few others and we looked at it and we thought oh that looks amazing. I think one of the biggest things that they got wrong really was they didn't they didn't add anything to it to up the colour palette or give it sort of parity with the snares as far as that was concerned but 
you had some great sound and I think it, oh, I think it did give slightly better, um, ah, oh, Metal Sonic. I mean, Sega really need to pull their ass out as far as Sonic's concerned. I mean, I didn't, I didn't even play that abomination for the, uh, the Wii U. Um, but then again, I suppose by design, it, it doesn't translate too well to, um, 3D space. I don't think it ever did. Even the uh, the Sonic Adventure games could be a bit a bit hit and miss. Oh, bonus stage. Ooh. Okay. Is it a bonus stage? I have no idea. Uh, again, this isn't a game I'm too familiar with. I'm f very familiar with the first two games. Didn't like Sonic 3. Some people love it. Didn't like it at all. Didn't like what they did to his sprite. Didn't like the music. The levels I didn't think were that great either. In fact, in some ways, this kind of reminds me of Sonic 3. It's just so much stuff on screen. It's hard to, hard to tell where you're going. And you're hitting stuff a lot of the time as well, which is a bit... Oh, see, I, I didn't know that was an enemy. Some rather great sound effects going on there. Ooh. Now that's going to give me a headache. Oh, brilliant. Got through the stage with seven rings. I did like their orchestra hits in the early 90s, late 80s, didn't they? And as you can see, the emulation is very, very good. The original Xbox comports itself admirably. And yes, full motion video on this, uh, on the emulation is uh, just as... Uh, just as ropey as it should be, with all those 64 sort simultaneous colours on screen. I tried I try playing uh, what was it? Rebel Assault or one of the Star Wars. God, it's grainy as hell. Dragon's Lair, that's another one that looks god awful. Oh, bollocks. He didn't look, he actually looked quite friendly, in fairness. Of course, you can get this on the PC or whatever. But it's it's really uh, really really quite a nice uh, emulation of the the old Mega CD. Anyway, let's come out. Of that. Let's go back to Coin Ops. Show you some PC Engine. Uh, as I say, it was a console I never was able to get my grubby hands on. Um, it's a really weird type of. It's great from the fact it's like a middle ground between the the Mega Drive and the. Um, I have to go back a bit now. Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo. Oh, there's a N64 games. Here we are. So you got the. Uh, it does the CD games as well, uh, like the much coveted uh, Castlevania. I believe it's Rondo of Blood or whatever. Uh, so, and you got great shooters like Salamander. Um, but we're going to play a game which, back in the day, I spent a fortune of my father's money playing in the arcade. Now, some people think this is the definitive port. I prefer the Mega Drives. Um, and I guarantee you I would have forgotten most of the item placements and I will be dog shit at this. Oh! I wonder where that went. Oh, I haven't deleted that by accident. There's a high likelihood I have. Um, okay, well, we won't do that. Let's, uh, let's have a quick look at... Um, as you can see, there's just such a selection. I, 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 I swear I spend about 20 minutes before looking through this menu um, before I actually play a game. Uh, let's get my ass kicked at a good, good bit of afterburner. 
I used to love this in the arcade. They, they had um, they used to have a whole a whole cockpit which you could go into, and the damn thing would move like a like a flight simulator. It was expensive as all hell, um, and it you. you with a game like this, you, you, you don't last five minutes, you really don't. Yeah, most of them are going to get away, aren't they? Oop. Scaling's really nice on this. Better than a Mega Drive, you be the judge. Oh shit. And it's a uh, it sound chip's pretty unique. It's um sounds like an FM sound chip to me, um but it's kinda of softer than the Mega Drives. Which again, it'll be down to your personal preference whether you like it. But it, it did have some crack in titles of its own. Again, uh, the hangover of the Nintendo Monopoly that they used to have on video games would be that consoles like the Turbo, and to some extent Sega when they first started off had to, had to really make their own games because they, third parties really, they, if they wanted it, their stuff on a Nintendo platform, uh, they, they honestly had to uh, just make it for Nintendo machines, or they, or they wouldn't be able to put it on there, which is a bit lousy. Good old cuddly Nintendo, who everybody loves. You may notice there are no very few Nintendo uh, um, uh, things on my uh, channel, and that's because they tend to try and take the lion's share of any gameplay. Uh, I mean, I won't be monetizing this because I'm, I'm going to obviously show some, um, which we'll do now with a nice bit of N64 emulation. Now this is, of course, the classic that is Super Mario 64. I didn't have an N64 growing up. Um, I uh, ditched the Nintendo after the Super Nintendo. Um, I, basic I basically had, uh, I think it was a PlayStation 1 I shared with my brother. We got it one year for Christmas, which was great. Don't worry about the banging in the background. So I, I believe this is at a 720p output. Um, it, it at least cleans up everything. Um, so it's it's certainly not as blurry as what the original would have looked like. Oh, Sarkeesian will be wetting their knickers. Kind of a damsel in distress, can we? Now, one thing I have noticed is uh, that there is some screen tearing sometimes. But then again, you know, this is really doing a emulation in a higher resolution and of a generation before it with, with architecture which is completely alien. So in that, that in itself is a triumph. So let's have a quick wander around with Mario. Some of these N64 games have aged pretty badly, but this, due to probably mainly due to its art style, has pretty much stayed in decent nick and has a certain charm all of its own. One thing I've got to commend Nintendo for is, that, is the art style of some of their games. But again, you think what the Nintendo 64 could have been had they gone down the route of CD-based gaming. I mean, yeah, you've got no lo no load times, really. But, you know, it has to rely on its sound chip for the sound, which can often be muffled. The memory wasn't really sufficient for the, the textures, so you ended up getting quite a lot of muffled textures in games. And the cartridges cost a bloody fortune for anybody to produce. Um, not saying that there's a 
you know, a shortage of decent games on the system. There isn't, not by any means. Great games like Wave Race and... Oh, bollocks. You get the general idea, anyway. See, there's that screen tearing creeping in a bit, but... Um, it's not continuous. I mean, you know, this isn't Saints Row on the PlayStation 3. Kind of t tearing territory. Or aliens fucking colonial marines. Do you know what? I think I might review that piece of shit one day if I'm feeling in a bad mood. Anyway, every everybody's seen this first level a billion times in playthroughs and what have you, so... Let's have a quick look at something else. So that's N64. Uh, Mario Kart works pretty well. Um, most of the games work pretty well, to be honest with you. It's um, not bad at all. Okay. Star Fox, yeah, that's, that's, that's really good. Let's find something else. And then we'll go into the arcade emulation. Oh yes, of course, the, the wonderful NES, what I grew up with. Um, my brother and I had an NES and uh, just to listen to some excellent music we're going to play the game that my brother Adam and I spent hours on I don't think we ever completed it these games are again a sadist's nightmare um, but they are an awful lot of fun Again, the emulation is pretty faithful, it's pretty good. And uh, you've got that wonderful NES sound chip. Alright, let's, let's get into this. I'm not going to do difficult because I'm not completely mad. He's gone silent because he's concentrated. This is ridiculous. Oh dear. Where have my powers gone? I used to be so into this game. But people forget that just the cost of these cartridges back in the day. I mean, we complain about games being 40, 50 quid now. But back in the day, those cartridges... Yeah, they're about that amount, and that, we're talking about the 80s here, you know, the 80s prices. Oh, I'm going to get killed, aren't I? Um, although they didn't have season passes, which were nearly the cost of the entire game, Warner Brothers. Hope you're listening. Bloody travesty, that was. Anyway, I'm dead, of course. Um, so there's a bit of Mega Man. Um, we're going to move out and have a look at something else. Obviously, there's so much here I can't I can't show you everything. I'd love to, but I can't. Um, it's de one of the best gaming investments I've made in a long time. As you see, I've got so many decent games on here. What else do we have? There's the NES. There's a big 32X. Mega Drive. Bit of what? And then we get onto the arcade now. Uh, I'm going to play this because this was one of my favourite games in the arcade, WrestleFest. I was really into WWF back in the day. And um, <laughs> it's, uh, oh, it's amazing. Absolutely love it. Uh, and it was also one of the best value arcade games. You'd really get, you'd really get a lot of uh, value for your money. And what I mean by that is, of course, I mean, you know, you'd put in 30p into WrestleFest. You could get a good half an hour... 45 minutes out of it if you knew what you were doing um, without cheating obviously winners don't use drugs everyone um, but fun people do okay oh. now I was well let's go and put some credits in there we'll do Royal Rumble and we'll be the greatest wrestler of all time Kurt Henning
absolutely idolised the man when I was growing up. This is a, a button match, but again, it's a matter of knowing what you're doing. The moves are easy to pull off. It's all about attrition. Normally when I'm tag team, I'm perfect in uh, Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, or uh, uh, the, uh, the Ultimate Warrior. That's one of the best finishing moves in the game. Gorilla Press and the uh, Big Splash. I'm not really concentrating here, am I? Demolition, they were one hell of a tag team. Oh. There's always this rumour at school when I was a kid, I don't know if it was true, but Earthquake and Typhoon, the natural disasters, were both bent. I don't think they were. I don't know, I could be wrong. God, I'm getting screwed up here. Alright, what are we going to do with you? And of course, the finish it, Perfect's got one of the best finishing moves ever, the Perfect Plex. And in this game, it's great because it's it's one of those ones that you can take a lot of energy off with. And um, I'm going to put another credit in and yeah, cheat my cheat my ass off on it. The sprite work here is absolutely outstanding. Yeah, there's no mistake in here. Who's who? I could be more into wrestling now, but it, it, I, I kind of lost lost the uh, the interest in it. Probably after WrestleMania seven or eight. I mean, I know that sounds like ages ago, and it bloody well was. Um, the whole Attitude Era, or whatever they call it, didn't appeal to me. It became less about the matches in the ring and more about you know hitting people with stuff on the outside of the ring and all these ludicrous storylines. I mean, the, the storylines were always ludicrous, but they, they just got absolutely ridiculous. But you used to have technical wrestlers like Perfect and Superfly, and I guess Rey Mysterio would be the, the modern equivalent of that sort of thing. I don't know. I don't know enough about wrestling. I'm not an authority, at least not any anymore. I used to really love it. My brother and I used to beat the crap out of each other. We learned all the moves. They said, oh yeah, don't do any of this at home, kids. Yeah, what was the first thing we did? We piled drived each other and blanks of wood and stuff. Anyway, that's that. Let's have uh, another look at some of it. And it does a variety of arcade games, uh, new and old. Wrestle War, that's a bloody difficult game. At least I found it difficult in the arcade. It used to eat up my uh, my allowance bit of golden axe like that you've even got the original killer instinct here which I won't play because it it will just be depressing for everybody watching because uh, I'm absolutely crap it but it emulates it perfectly really nice Metal Slug. So you got a lot of Neo Geo stuff, and again, the Neo Geo emulation is brilliant. Let's, uh, let's do a bit of Fatal Fury, shall we? Again, I'm no authority on Fatal Fury, um, but I used to play it. I had Fatal Fury 1 for the Super Nintendo, and it was one of those. I, I mean, many of us, we weren't so clued into the scene as, as much as what what games were actually being specifically made for the system. We actually went for the arcade ports. I know it sounds odd now, um, but we wanted it. We, it was that whole thing about taking your arcade home with you. And once you got to the PlayStation 1, it kind of was... Uh, <laughs> it, oh, I love that logo. It was no longer 
necessary to go to arcades, which sounds a bit sad, really. Okay. Will be Terry, I think. But I think he's the only one I can remember. Let's go and try and beat Bear. Now, is Big Bear supposed to be Raiden from the first game? I, c I can't remember. I didn't go so well. <coughs> well, with arcade emulation comes arcade difficulty, I'm afraid. I'm trying to knock the damn nose. Again, the, the Xbox controller is actually surprisingly good for fighting games. It's not bad. That's if you don't suck at them. There's a bit of Neo Geo emulation for you. We'll come out of that. And as you've probably, you can probably see from the footage that coin ops is one of the possibly the best things that you can do with your Xbox, your original Xbox. Now there are plenty of tut tutorials online uh, for people who want to uh, want to do this uh, of themselves, or you can go and get um, get, uh, get it off of eBay or something. Now, I'm just going to show you now Soul Calibur 2, and I believe this is it might be the I'm hoping it is the uh, the version I think it is, which should be the actual Xbox version. Why am I hoping that? Well, this is one of those ones that displays in glorious HD. At least I think it is. Yeah, it is. So here's your Xbox, the original Xbox, displaying pretty much. It's not in widescreen, unfortunately, but displaying pretty much like a um, Xbox 360. And the game looks great. Her graceful sword dance cuts through enemies. Well then, let us dance. Battle one, fight. I don't know any moves, so don't laugh at me too much. Oh, God. Cow. But as you can see, it looks rather lovely. Um, I believe another game is Scarface, which I've tried, and that that looks great. Um, 720p. I'm sure there's some nuance to this game, um, but <laughs> I unfortunately <laughs> never never played it back in the day. I do have this for the PlayStation 2, and it doesn't look anywhere anywhere like close to this. I think it's PlayStation 2. But then again, I suppose HD TVs were such. Oh. HDTVs were a rarity back in the early 2000s. Much, they were quite the rarity when the Xbox 360 came out. I remember my brother, I think he plugged it, his into a monitor for, for a couple of years. Let's see another stage. Versus Yun Sung. Youth and passion combine to create a hardened warrior. Right, apparently. You're quite the rude one. 
Oh great, I picked the campus character. Oh fucker. Okay. <laughs> anyway, you get the general gist of it. So, I'm going to leave it there. Um, I thought I'd give you a little tour of this uh, rather excellent soft modded uh, Xbox. So, it's definitely an investment I would consider if, particularly if into retro games, you don't have the space, you don't have the cartridges anymore. It's certainly something to consider. Now, I'm going to leave you with some footage from actual original Xbox games running through the component cable um, and uh, thank you very much for watching the channel uh, of course subscribe below I don't normally say that but hell it's my birthday next week so <laughs> if you feel like giving me a sub for my birthday then by all means anyway you take care of yourselves see you soon We better stay back. All we do is get in the way. That was one of the Jedi accompanying Bastila. Damn, we could have used her help. was not here on the bridge. They must have retreated to the escape pods. We better head that way too. The Sith want Bastila alive, but once she's off the ship, there's nothing stopping them from blasting the Endar Spire into galactic dust. On behalf of the UAC, welcome to Mars City. This facility serves as the central hub for all scientific... Research. Attention, Director Banks. Please welcome report to, to Central Administration. You can just leave your bag there. I'll have it sent up to your quarters. Okay, there's a few things we need to take care of first. This is your personal data assistant. You'll need this to access all secure areas. If you get clearance for any security zones, it'll download directly. It's important, so don't lose it. I see here that Sergeant Kelly has requested your immediate attention. Head directly to Marine Command. It's just that way. Follow the signs.
Mars City is a smoke-free facility. Please smoke only in designated areas. Thank you for your cooperation. I'm here because there seems to be some very serious problems. Oh, really? Do I need to remind you of the groundbreaking work that we're doing here? No, but I've been authorized by the board to look at everything. The board authorized you? Hmm. The board doesn't know the first thing about science. All they want is something to make them more money, some product. Don't worry, they'll get their product. After how many accidents? Tell me, Dr. Petruger, why are so many workers spooked, complaining, requesting transfers off Mars? They simply can't handle life here. They're exhausted and overworked. If I had a larger, more competent staff and bigger budget, even these few accidents could have been avoided. I'm afraid you'll get nothing more until my report is filed with the board. I will need full access, Dr. Petruger, Delta included. I won't have any difficulties doing that, will I? Only if you get lost, Swan. Just stay out of my way. Amazing things will happen here soon. You just wait. Let's go. Chance of a hand? I say, what are you doing way out here, old chap? I'm supposed to be on that island. Are you sure, Bean? This whole area is about to be bombed to Kingdom Come. By who? Well, by the Navy, of course. Damn it. Don't worry, old boy. We've a while yet. There's someone I have to find on the island first. Those Navy chaps won't attack until they get my signal. But, well, that was my best pipe, you bounders! No, don't! Get down! Good shot, old man. I don't think much of this weapon. But I'm afraid you've let the cat out of the bag now. Why? What's going on? That flare was the signal. It's going to get a bit hairy from here on. Damn it. All right, look. If you can get us to shore without getting us killed, I'll help you find your friends. Okay? Good show, sir. Consider it done.
here. Phew. That was hard work. Come on. Come on, their troops have landed. Get ready.